Hello, how are you today? I hope you're having a great week. Today, she is the return of the Quiet as Mouse book club, and I am going to be talking about Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is the first in the Locked Tomb series, and it follows Gideon of the Ninth of Nine Houses uh, that live on the nine planets that make up the Dominicus system, and each of these houses practices a different branch of necromancy. Gideon reluctantly agrees to go with her lifelong enemy, Harrow, who is the heiress of the Ninth House, to a creepy decaying mansion that belongs to the first house with other duos from each of the other houses where their aim is to investigate that house and discover the secrets of lictorhood lictors being immortal necromancers who have a lot of power in the world was that a good synopsis i'm a little rusty with book reviews it has been so long since my last quite the last book club video and this is relevant to the review so bear with me i love reading but I have been struggling to read for so long. I started The Quiet as Mouse book club in 2014. I was reviewing a book every two weeks, but I burnt out. Um, the amount I was reading just dropped off dramatically. I tried multiple times to get back to reading. I succeeded when I started Discworld Discourses here in 2019 to 2020. I decided to reread and review every Discworld book um, two books a month. It was so much fun. It was a great time. I really loved it. I thought I had got back to reading, but since Discworld Discourses ended, Gideon the Ninth is the first book that I have finished. It's been three years. I haven't read a book from cover to cover for three years. I tried a couple of times. I was reading one book. I got a few chapters in. I stopped reading it for a while. I realised that I'd forgotten what was going on and that I'd have to start again from the beginning. It put me off. And then another book, a shorter one, I got further in. I got two chapters from the end and then put it down and never picked it up again. I could have finished that book in half an hour and I still haven't finished it. It was a real problem. I could not bring myself to read. Until, cut to June 2023, I'm going on holiday to Jersey, hour-long flight, either way I wanted to bring a book to read on the flight. Didn't want to bring one of those other two books that I had just mentioned, you know, that were on the go. The first was just a really big book, wouldn't have been convenient for travelling, and then the second, because I was two chapters from the end, I'd finish it in half an hour and then wouldn't have anything to do. But anyway, I had Gideon the Ninth in my to-be-read pile. I got it at Christmas 2021, I think. I had seen a little bit about it on social media. A few people I follow had talked about it and read it. One of those people described it as lesbian necromancers in space, which is kind of written on the front. But that stuck in my mind and, you know, I thought, that sounds great. I've not read a book like that. Sold. So I got it and then it sat on my shelf for a couple of years, but I took it on the flight because it, it was the right size. So I read it on the flight. I didn't read it at any other point during the holiday, just on the flights, but I did like it and it zipped along a bit. So I got a fair amount through, even though I read it for about two hours and then I got back home and I would occasionally read it. And you know, for me at that time, occasionally reading it was amazing. 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, but I kept going. I enjoyed it enough to keep going. I did find the book quite confusing, especially in the first half. I found it difficult to understand sometimes. Sometimes there'd be, you know, a paragraph describing a room and I'd get to the end of it and I'd be like, I cannot picture this room. And with the world building as well, some of the terms, Lichter, for instance, would go over my head and I couldn't figure out from context what was going on. But that did kind of work in my favour, oddly, because, you know, if I was away from reading the book for uh, two or three weeks, uh, when I came back to it, I wasn't worried that I had forgotten what had just happened because I didn't have a great grasp on what was going on anyway. And also there's a small cast of characters and they're listed at the start of the book, so that was helpful. So that was kind of how I read the book for the first half, or the first two thirds maybe, and then at some point, slowly, um, I started reading it more and more, and then suddenly I was reading a book as much as I used to read. Magic. So happy. And then, if you can believe it, because I can't quite believe it, I finished the book, I went back to the start, and I read the whole thing through again in less than a week. I'm back, and now I have bought the other two books that have been released so far, and I'm going to start the second book today. Uh, forgive me, that was quite long-winded, but I feel like it's important context. My relationship with this book is quite different to my relationship with any other book because of the whole not reading, missing reading, wanting to read, completely failing at reading, and then 
getting back to reading. So let's talk about the book a bit more, shall we? As I kind of touched on, it's quite an easy read, it kind of zips along. The writing style is quite fun, and Gideon as a main character I found very endearing. She is funny, she is observant, I really enjoyed being in her head. Harrow as a character is really interesting as well, as is their relationship, and there's lots of other distinct characters and relationships in the book as well. All of the houses have a slightly different vibe. After a while you're not going to confuse someone from the eighth house with someone from the third house, for instance. There's a lot of character growth in the book for Harrow and Gideon, less so for the other characters, but I still really enjoyed the the character work in the book. I also mentioned earlier about me finding the book quite confusing for a lot of it. By the time I'd got to the end, I felt like I had a better handle on the world. And also, at the end, there is a glossary, there's also a sermon on cavaliers and necromancers, and there's also cohort intelligence files, which include more information on the different characters. If I had read these three things at the start, I feel like so many of my problems with getting a bit lost would have disappeared completely. But I didn't know they were there because I didn't want to turn to the end of the book in case I got spoiled. And I feel like I'm justified in that because also at the end there is an explanation of naming systems which is a bit spoilery, and also there's a preview of the next book. So something to bear in mind, if you're a couple of chapters in and you're feeling a little bit lost, it might be worth very carefully um, making your way to the glossary um, at the end, which is uh, page 445 in my book, you're probably also good to do the sermon and the cohort intelligence files, but don't look on from there, so 467 onwards in my copy of the book. That bit at the end was one of the main reasons why I went straight back to the beginning of the book again, because a lot of things that I felt like I hadn't quite got a handle on in the first read suddenly made a lot more sense, and yeah, with my second read of the book I just had so many fewer issues, and I'm sure that's partly due to me, you know, reading it more quickly the second time, and not reading it for, you know, ten minutes every two weeks, but even taking that into account, I, I still feel like the book can be quite confusing when you start reading it. There's a lot of new things about the world to learn, but even with the confusion, I really enjoyed reading this book. The story, the characters, the setting, the world, once I understood them more, I loved them all so much. There were a couple of nice plot twists that I really didn't see coming. It was engrossing and made me excited to read on. It's one of the most interesting reading experiences I've ever had with a book. Because of everything I mentioned at the start and my relationship with reading when I first picked up this book, and also because I had to work a bit to get into it, I felt very rewarded at the end. And with rereading it as well, I have got even more out of it. And, you know, it's responsible for breaking me out of my reading slump. I feel like I owe Gideon something, you know, reading is back in my life. I am so excited to continue reading the series. I'm going to review the books as well, and I'd be very interested to find out, after I finish the Locked Tomb series, where I go next with my reading journey. I hope I keep reading, I hope I manage to keep up the momentum a little bit. Uh, I am excited now to read some of the books in my to-be-read pile, and also I'm starting to look in bookshops and online to see what there is around, so that's quite promising. It's been a long time since I've sort of been like, what am I going to read next? So thank you Gideon the Ninth for bringing something I love so much back into my life, and thank you for watching this video, which was part review and part story time. I really recommend Gideon the Ninth, and I'd love to know what you think about the book if you read it, or if you have read it already. I kind of kept this review spoiler free, so please do mark any spoilers in your comments. I will give Gideon the Ninth 4.3 out of 5. It has its issues, but it's still a really great and interesting read, and I will be forever grateful to this book for getting me back into reading. So that's the end of the video. It's so nice to have made a book review. In the next Quiet as Mouse book club, I will be reviewing Harrow the Ninth. What a lovely thing to be able to say. But anyway, thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and let's move across to the end screen. If you'd like to see my latest video or some more Quiet as Mouse book club videos, then you can do that below me here, and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel or visit my website, then you can do that beside me here. And there's a link to my Patreon page in the description below if you fancy it. Take care, stay safe and well, and I will see you soon.